Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, huh, mamas? How are we doing? Do we have any more? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I don't, I don't know if this is the only baby or not. I knew we'd have some babies hatch early. Oh my good, thank you. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, until we can assess this, look, that baby trying to go in there. So we have all these babies hatching and this could be a two or three day process. If you saw the video, guys, by the way, welcome to Appalachia's Homestead. Um, we're on technically day 16, according to my calendar. If you watched the video from a couple of days ago and I show you all these broody silkies, there were five, now there's seven. We have 18 eggs, but my point is, is I had said, they built this clutch, meaning they could have been on eggs two or three days prior to my day one. So I say that. So having some babies hatching right now is not surprising. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, awesome, actually. So, okay, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven mama broodies, okay? They're on eggs. We also gave them duck eggs. You uh, will see that in a video. So we've started that process. What I'm gonna do is I just move the little block for now to where nothing can get out on that side. And we're just gonna leave them alone for a little while. We clearly have some hatching situations and some bonding situations. So we're gonna do our morning chores. And oh, by the way, Gossamer. James, you're not the only one that Gossamer got. <laughs> I think he got me a little bit more. He is on guard. All right, let's, let's leave it be for now. Let's leave it be. So here we are much later in the afternoon and we have decided that we are going to separate out the silky chalet and split it in half, okay? And make the side that goes out to the run open for whoever is non-broody and the males. We're gonna put like a wiring in between and put the broody mamas and the mama hens into babies over on the other side all together um, and they're gonna have food and water because what's gonna happen is, as I predicted, these babies are gonna start hatching, but they're hatching at different rates. So we have to figure out how to work with this whole situation. So like I said previously on the other video about this situation, remember that these girls started gathering the eggs and went broody all on their own. And by the time I was like, okay, they're broody, they're broody, they're broody. Remember they were already on eggs. And by the time we really figured it out, they were on 35 eggs, which we've kind of whittled down to about 18. But the situation is there, there could be day, day 16, day 20, day 18. There's a variation going on. I could go up down there right now and find more babies, which is, uh, who knows? So right now we're focusing on which wire we want to use. I want something that's easy for me to get over and enough to keep them separate. I'm not worried about any of the other birds at this point being aggressive, but I don't want the mamas going out and down the run and then the little babies going up and down the run or getting too far away from the mamas. See, this is the issue with the broody silkies. When they're in that broodyville broody trance, they're not necessarily mothering the babies as much as I think that they should be. And like you've seen in, in a lot of other hens, they will get there, but you could potentially lose babies along the way because the babies, after a day or two or three, they start becoming like little toddlers and they're scurrying around and they're eating and drinking and running around. They can chill. Now listen, we're 95 degrees, 94 degrees right now. So they probably won't chill but we don't want them to be too distant from the mamas and they're all working together right now. So we're gonna separate them out. So let's check out what wire, let's see. Okay, so this is my three sisters garden, which is coming along great. Yes, you are seeing some weeds, but I'll get in there and pull a little bit here and there. But once those uh, squash, which technically is Cherokee tan in the North Carolina roasters take over, you ain't gonna know that's their baby. You won't care. And look at all my sunflowers, holy moly. But this is the wire I think I'm gonna use. We just connected it here and we have just left it here. 
you know, I think we're going to be okay. I don't think these babies are going to fit through here. My husband was concerned these holes were too big. Um, I don't think this is not the large chicken wire that he's thinking of. So I think this is going to work decent, easy to put up, easy to take down. So this is what we're going to go with. This is what I'm going to do. Okay, so we're going in. Guys, the sun's very bright. It's very, very hot. We're gonna move very fast. Right now I'm going in to check everybody and I'm gonna shut the door so we can keep Gossamer, whew, the fierce warrior, out in the run while we work. Let's go. How you doing? Hello. So, um, I just want to tell you that it looks like now we have eight, eight, <laughs> eight broody hens. So, um, this is what they do. It's like they just kind of mesh together like a big old hot More. cinnamon roll. You know how you buy cinnamon rolls and they're all like in the container together and they're like just yummy and delicious and hot together and you bake it and you put... You put that icing right on and all together. That's what these silkies do. They want to be together. Not separate broody entities, but together. Okay, I want you to watch. Watch, 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 watch. What is it, darlings? Oh, she's so broody. Hello, Miss Moody Broody. Oh, thank you. I love, you want to show everybody? Oh, thank you. That was a great example. Thank you. Thank you. Where's baby? Where's baby, darling? Just baby. It's your one day. Okay, let's get to business. Okay, so what we're thinking is we're going to take this section from here, separate it off to over there. So they're going to have literally almost half of the coop as a hatchery and a nursery. I'm gonna put fresh pine shavings, a little DE, you know, some herbs, and of course we will um, hopefully just transition this to over there. And then they can hatch babies all day long and then the babies will be safe with the mamas and we won't have the issues of thinking about them going out there. We're not ready for that yet. This could take all week to finish up. So we wanna make sure everybody is safe as possible. That's what we're going for. Oh, gross. Honey, I'm sweating. I am sweating. Okay, so I have scooped out the Silky Chalet this half. I wanna get it clean, I wanna get it perfect. This is what I'm talking about. We're, we're cutting stuff, I'm about to build stuff, and I'm in here scooping out stuff with a snow shovel. They haven't moved a muscle. All eight of them. <laughs> Okay, so I'm putting in super fine pine shavings. I actually, this is a, a different brand than I normally buy, but it's what they had at the time, so this will work. And I'm using one hand to film so you see what I'm doing. And then, if you can open that for me, darling, I'm going to show you that I'm going to put um, these herbs over in here. I do this in my nesting boxes. You've seen me talk about my herb blend before. I love this stuff. Love it, love it, love it. I'll, there's a link down below. If not, I'll make sure that there is. Smell that. Is that not glorious? Oh, I love that. Nesting box blend. Since we know we're probably going to be putting them, I hope, in this corner. I mean, what we say we're going to do and what they want to do is two different things. Just to kind of spruce it up, make it smell nice. It smells like lavender and mint and all kinds of pretty things. Awesome stuff. Old box. Awesome stuff. I keep buying the little refills and putting it back in here. Okay. Okay. Look, haven't moved. Look at this. Haven't moved a muscle. <laughs> okay, so I could wait till almost dark to move them. In 99% of the cases, I would tell you to do that. 
James agrees. But these girls aren't moving. We're both gonna work together. We'll see how much we can film. The goal is to get them over there. I just wanna get them over there and then set up their food and water. I'm not sure, I don't like to do this. I may just put the food down on the floor near the babies because these little babies, it's really nice to use those uh, just like a paper plate and nine times out of 10, they work good. In a couple of days, I will use something like that. But when they're so tiny, if they get underneath the paper plate, it's like they just get caught in space and time and they can, you know, not make it after that. So sometimes you have to do things a little bit different depending on the situation. All right, let's get these girls moved. I'm Okay, kids. Aunt Patera's got to move mamas and babies. Are you ready? Are you ready? I'm going to name that little dark one over there Lazy Bones. He keeps wanting to go to sleep. Tell your sister to wake up. Okay. Halfway there, there's been another baby hatch. So as soon as we move two mamas and the baby, we start putting eggs and they're trying to reacclimate. We got to keep going. Got to keep going. So, we're gonna shut, just shut the door. Let it just kinda calm down. They're settling in together. They're pulling in the eggs and the babies, how they want to, how they need to, whatever. We're gonna bring in some food and water. So there's three babies total, and I have something else I'm gonna do. So, as my laundry is going, and we're cooling off for just a second, I have one baby in the brooder. My little silkies that were in that little, um, watch my doogee, didn't turn out that great. So I had four hatch and three have passed. So I've got one that's thriving awesome. There were two that were doing great. And then all, I came back like two hours later and guys, it's just what happens. You can't predict it. So I have one little baby that I hatched um, and I'm gonna give it to those mamas in there. I'm just gonna put it with those babies. It's only about two days older, day and a half, two days older, so it's gonna fit right in. Cause they're gonna be stagger hatching anyway. So I'm gonna do it right now. I'm gonna take that baby and we're gonna give it to all eight of its mamas. Hey Bugsy. Hey Bugsy. Hey Bugsy. You wanna go to your new home? You wanna meet your mamas? Your mamas and your papas? Let's go darling, let's go. Okay, big guy's gone up to the house to get a scoop of the chick starter grower. That's what we're gonna feed them, the mamas can eat it. I did the little mini waters in here for now, three of them, and I always put marbles or little rocks or whatever in the base so that if the baby steps in, it doesn't submerge as deep, it doesn't drown. Although I'll tell you, a jump in the river right now would be great. So. We have three babies right here and a fresh baby underneath the mamas. So I'm gonna conclude this. I'm gonna keep you posted. I'm gonna let the other birds in and let them be nosy rosies. Look, look, look. Guys, 
guys. We'll see you on the next video because you know there's going to be one, right?